What's going on folks? Welcome to this quick and easy signals tutorial in Voxel Tycoon. We're going to be covering the very basics so that you can get your beautiful train network up and running in no time. Doing exactly what you want, where you want, and how you want it. We're going to be covering a couple different terms such as the standard signal which we'll call this one. Um, it can also be called a block signal but we're going to call it the standard signal because it's what's selected when you select the signals in your toolbar. We also got a chain signal, which is this one right here. It has an extra light on it, and we'll get to why in a second. We'll also cover which signals to use where and how to determine directional things. And if you're patient enough, at the end of this, we'll also cover a little bit of a, I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's uh, meant to be that way, but it feels like a bug. And, uh, and it's something to keep in mind when you design your network. I definitely burnt myself on this. So what is a signal block? A signal block is the space between one standard signal and the next one. We can call this the entrance signal for the intents of this tutorial, and we'll call this the exit signal for the intents of this tutorial. What the entrance signal and exit signals do is they define a signal block. The signal block is between the two signals, so this area right here. What that means is that once this train passes by this signal, it occupies a signal block. The signal block in this case is this one, meaning this is red because the signal block ahead of it is occupied. However, this signal is still green because there's no signal in this signal block. So once the train passes by this one, that becomes red and this is now green ready for a new train to enter the signal block. The reason why this is useful is it allows you to divide up your track in several different pieces, allowing you to have more trains on the same real estate. And that will come in very handy when you wanna do multiple trains on the same route. Instead of making one track per train, you can do two tracks, one going in that direction and another one coming back like the setup right here. You can also use junctions. This is a very simple junction where you only have two, tra two tracks going in the same direction, nothing coming back, meaning the trains here will choose either that track or this one depending on what is free. The reason why is that the signal, the chain signal, which is right here, will be green when both of these are free. When it's yellow it means that one of these are free and when it's red none of these are free that means that there will never be any trains in the signal block that is the junction and if a train wants to go into one of the platforms or one of the uh, sidings from the junction and it can't it will not take up the junction space which can be used for other things we'll get to that in a second now this is a bit of a weird one Right now, there's green signals ahead, yet the trains stop back here for no good reason. The reason why is because there's no signals on this siding here, meaning that we have the following blocks. We have one block here. We got one block over here. And we got one block which starts by this signal right here, goes up to that signal, and alongside the siding over here before it comes over here and there's the next signal. So if there's any trains like this one right there, this train has to wait until this train has passed by this signal here. That can be fixed by putting any signal over here and this train can move along straight ahead. I pers personally prefer to put chain signals before all junctions that way the trains can choose whatever track is free and available at any given time keep in mind though that trains in voxel tycoon don't always be behave the way you thought they should the pathfinding is a little funky like this for example the train could have gone straight ahead the path straight ahead is free and it's faster but it doesn't always want to do that if we can get an example here with this one going to the right there we go why are you going right this is faster it's open it's free but you're not choosing it no one really knows why and now for the little secret 
over here we have two different tracks going in opposite directions but there's one fatal flaw the thing about this part of this track is that there's one section one chain one signal block between these four signals because these two tracks right here isn't far enough apart to count as different entities so this is one entity making this all together one block so there could not be one train going in opposite directions in this block at the same time in order to make that happen you need to have space in between and you can tell if you got enough space by checking if you can put signals on the inside of the track if you can't like we can't do here can't even put it on the outside that means that this here counts as one block of track making both of these relatively useless now to round us all off i figured we'd do a couple of examples from my own rail network in uh, my voxel tycoon first impression playthrough uh, where this tutorial in particular was requested at episode 11. we'll speed up time a little to get a little bit more action in this junction uh, the way that it works is we have chain signals on all entry points like this one when this train passes by and auto save of course hits at the beautiful time this signal chain signal is yellow because we can still have what is a log train going straight ahead here can still pass on by but no other trains can go out over this way now this block is also free and and that's how it's set up so that we can have as many trains passing by every junction as often as possible this is the exact same thing as we did in our little tutorial village up here with uh, the siding here now we also have a freight hub set up right here this works a little bit differently and right here we got some modded signals these are standard signals that you can just plonk on like so they function the exact same way now this is where the chain signals really come into play because they tell the trains trains coming in which platforms are free and which are busy allowing you to have a much higher freight frequency in your stations and we haven't filled this station up yet but right now you can see that this train chooses that platform instead of this one because it's free and now they're both busy which means that this train has to wait for any one of these platforms to become free the same works with the or the way that the uh, standard signals work here is this one is red these two are red so there's no entry but there's a free exit right here on by this uh, chain signal which means that either one of these platforms right here can exit this way but no train can enter as for these signals right here they are green as long as this signal is green because i don't want any train to take up the junction waiting for uh, while the other platform is free so that this train could have come into a platform so if one train was now exiting and it was in the middle of this junction this train could not have entered into the free platform until this train that was clearing was in the middle of the junction had cleared the junction and that's not a wanted scenario now i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did be sure to fling a like at it share it if you want uh, if you know anyone who needs any signal help and if you got if you know something that i forgot to mention or i explained something badly let me know in the comment section be sure to check out my my series on the game but that's it for me thanks so much for watching i've been average you've been awesome thanks so much for joining i'll see you next time cheerio